pastor. In case you do, this is Brother Preston. He is our youth pastor, and he is awesome. Welcome. That was an awesome welcome. You guys need to kind of coach my youth sometimes. <laughs> Get them to wake up. I love watching you guys worship. Uh, I was watching back there in the back, and I love watching everybody worship. That's one of my favorite things to do is, uh, and in our church on Sunday mornings, we have such a different, uh, different way. There's so many different ways that we have. We like y'all that have some that stand up and they raise their hands to the Lord. And, we have some clapping and some amens and some singing. And there are so many different ways that, that our, our, our people at our church, our congregation, that they worship. But there is no wrong way to worship. Amen. 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 So, I'm, like I said, I'm glad to be here with you guys. Uh, not that I had a busier week than you did, but I just had several messages to get ready this week. And uh, I started preparing for several of them. I had something for Tuesday night. And then we had youth for Wednesday uh, prepared for that. And then uh, this morning, I had a class from 10 to 11. And I met up at, uh, uh, did an FCA huddle at uh, Rosebud School. Did a couple of their lunches. And I uh, had a pretty, pretty cool week. And then I had this. And uh, my wife came home. Ashley, she's in the back waving right now. Uh, that's my wife, Ashley, in the back there. That's, that's Miss Wanda there. Hey, Wanda. Uh, but uh, she came home yesterday, and I said, oh, God, I, I, he still has to give me something for Thursday night, Cowboy Rescue. And uh, my wife's so great. She's always has encouraging words. And she said, you know, you know just, just, I hope God, and I, and I knew that, too. I knew he could provide a message. And uh, she gave me a couple words of advice, and it got me thinking. And, and that's what last night the Lord laid on from my heart what I was supposed to talk about. And I'm excited to be here with you about it. So, uh, but with that being said, all week long after Sunday, I was starting beginning to think about this, about and praying about this. And uh, God gave me a one line, and, uh, and He gave it to me a couple weeks ago. I was at a, a, a pastor retreat, and uh, I love that this is not mine. I got I stole it from someone else. But it really has got me to think it really heavy on what this, what he said. And this guy said, he said, it is a sin to do good things when God has designed you to do great things. Isn't that so powerful? Yeah. Let that sink in. It is a sin to do great things when God has designed you to do great things. So, you know what? Just a verse to back that up is in Hebrews 10, verses 14. It says... For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are willing, those who are being sanctified. That that one offering is Jesus on the cross for our sins. And he's perfected that forever for those who, look at your neighbor and tell them, through your those who. Those who that have been sanctified. Sanctified, that's one of the big church words, isn't it? Sanctified means that we are trying to live for God. So if you're here today and you are trying to live for God, by His sacrifice, He is trying to perfect you. And He wants you to have great things here in life. Okay? Let's pray real quick. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this time that you've allowed us to gather right now, Lord. We're so very thankful that you have designed us with perfect things, great things in mind for us. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We pray that you direct this message tonight. Let it be your message. Allow my word to speak what you want. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, a little bit about my testimony, uh, me and my family's testimony. Um, after me and Ashley met, and uh, I, I suckered her into staying forever, uh, we wanted to do it right. You know, I grew up in a church family. And uh, we wanted to do it right. So we started dating, going to the church in her hometown. And we got we got involved early on in our relationship. Uh, met a great youth pastor at the church in Mountain Home, a Baptist church in Mountain Home. And great, a great relationship with him. And uh, we asked him to, to marry us. And uh, he wanted to do counseling. And I thought, yeah, right. And he's like, no, I really do. And I was like, 
you know what? We can do that. We can do, we can do counseling. It was, it was Bible-based. And uh, so I said, you know what? I told her, I said, we need to put Christ in the center of our marriage. And, you know, uh, that's exactly the way it needs to be. So we started doing that, and we wanted Christ to be our firm foundation in our home. We had our girls. I've got two girls. They're, uh, one's fixing to be 12 uh, this coming Wednesday, and I have one that's 10. And uh, we had those girls over in this church, and uh, we plugged in and got involved in our church and began to serve. And the preacher asked if I would consider being a deacon in the church and being ordained. So I got a call from God to be a deacon at this church. So we plugged in. Things were going great. It was going great. But remember what we talked about the early, early on in this, in this message? God wants us to have great things, right? So it was going good, but God wanted great things. So we're plugged in, and me and my wife both, we we're part of a, a, a cowboy family. Uh, we had those desires in our hearts. And we heard about a cowboy church that was just north of Mount Home. Midway, Arkansas, Barnum Catholic Church. And uh, so we went up there to try it out. And uh, going from our girls, barely, we could barely get them up, get around, and get them to church by 11 o'clock in the Baptist Church. They were up and ready to go, ready to get a donut at the, the Catholic Church at 9 o'clock. So God kind of confirmed that through our kids. It was, it, was, it was a place for us. So we went to the Catholic Church, and uh, I remember God. One day I just kind of struggled with this a bit. We, we weren't really sure God was calling us up there for sure or not. And I was, I was always thinking, you know, church is church. But I mean, if you want to go play and have fun, that's one thing. But God revealed a, a scripture. I remember this one of my favorite scriptures out of Psalms 37, verse 4. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord, also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So that told me that I can do that. I can go and, be, and live the cowboy life and seek the Lord at the same time. As long as we're putting Him first, He'll give us those desires in our heart. So we get up there and we, we switch our membership up there. And uh, so we went and they heard that I was a deacon at the church. So they, they asked me to pray about being a leader at their church. So me and Ashley, we got in there and got plugged in and started serving. I got on the leadership part of the church. And uh, We've got God calling us to do more in the church. Remember, we were things were going good, but God wanted great things. So me and Ashley, we started a young couples class at the Capital Church there. And we it's some of our best memories in our in our in our early part of our, our marriage. And uh, we, we we created this little family inside the church. And we were up to about ten or twelve couples that were coming. And we were focused on putting God in the center of our, of our class, you know. We were, we were trying to instill in them the things that we were trying to do about putting Christ in the center and a firm foundation in our marriage. And, and things were going so good. But, like I said, God wanted great things to happen. So, during this process, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law, they were coming to this class. And my brother-in-law came to me and he said, I'm feeling that to get in ministry. I said, amen. And uh, so he started shouting on the preacher there, started uh, doing training through the preacher there, and uh, he ended up getting ordained, started preaching, and God led him to go to Calico Rock to start a Catholic church in Calico Rock, Arkansas. So just like probably most of y'all do, we're praying for our family, praying for our friends, and we were hearing about the struggles that they were going on starting this Catholic church. So Ashley and I, we, got, we felt something on our heart that we should go help them. So the Lord let us go down there and just try to help them plant this cowboy church. So we went down there, and uh, uh, you, can ask, you can ask the youth kids. I play guitar, guitar a little bit. I'm probably not very good at it. They probably would rather someone else do it, but I'm not the one they got. So <laughs> when we got down there, me and a couple of guys, we started uh, leading the music for the church. And then I started doing that Bible study on Sunday mornings. And like I said, things were going good. But God wanted great things. So during the same time as when we began, we got introduced to this church. We started bringing our two girls down here to our Salt Teenage Rodeo Association. We were bringing them down here. And we got to meet Brother George and Ron and Josh and 
Chad, and all the guys that was part of this church. Things were going good, but God wanted great things. So we we got to a point where I remember coming, we would we come down here and uh, rodeo on Saturdays, and we were staying and coming to church on Sundays here. And I remember coming to one who was right behind the bleach down here. I told Ron, I said, if you're going to think I'm crazy, but I feel like we're supposed to work together in some way. And he said, well, I don't think you're crazy. I think so, too. So we got to plan it because I don't know what y'all know about this church, but every so often, every so many years, they plan a new church. And he said, if we can get, if we get one of our churches on their feet, Mount Home is our next location. So I was thinking this time, because I'm a firefighter in EMT, I work 24 hours on, on 48. So I thought, well, that'd be perfect. My brother in law, he'd be the preacher. I can help help on my days off to help you to go on. And we had a good plan going, but God wanted great things to happen. So we fast forward to about three years ago. In February, it'll be three years. Uh, we got a call from Ron, and he asked us to pray about coming down here and being a full time youth pastor. And uh, we began to pray about it. And uh, God started opening doors, opening a lot of things through our eyes that we hadn't seen before. He wanted the great things to happen. So now we're here, and it's been over a year now that we've been in here full time. There were a lot of things that we felt like we were leaving that were good and not known. We had good jobs, we had good retirements, we had a lot of things going for us. We, had, we worked on a place for five years to get to exactly how God, we felt like God was telling us to do it. And we, we stayed in our friend and out for two months and then we moved out here. <laughs> well, that's some good things, but we came to some great things. This church has been great for us. It's been great for our kids. It's been great for our youth. And it's not me doing it, it's the Lord doing it. But God wanted good things, great things to happen. And that's what we're here. That's why we're here. But I'm telling you this to tell you something else. No matter what you feel like, your life is going, if it's good or if it's bad, God loves you and he wants you to have great things. So even if you feel like right now your life's in a good place, you keep seeking God. He wants great things to happen. But you know what? I believe most of us in this room, I believe we all believe that God wants us to have great things. I think if we all took a vote right now, you would believe it and you would sincerely say that you believe God wants great things for you. But how do we make it happen? How do we make it happen? That's the real question tonight, isn't it? Lots of faith. Lots of faith, yeah. That's a, lot. That's a big, big part of it. God led me to this verse. This is our main verse tonight. It's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And it's verses 24 and 25. It says, Do you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. Paul is telling us that we are to compete in life like we're competing as a trained runner. What do y'all know about most about a professional athlete or an athlete that is at a high level? They have a trainer, don't they? We we'll probably understand that not only does they have trainers to work their physical bodies, but they have trainers that want to help them with their mental mental game too, right? Our mental, what we say, I, I told this to a kid today, I'm sure y'all probably heard it too, but it's 99% mental. You ever heard that before? That's a big part of it. It really is a big part of it. But whether it be by understanding God's grace, or the people that we have in our lives, how we see ourselves determines the great things that we have in our life. It's so, so important that you put yourself around each and every day. You know, your friends that you have, the people that you count on, are they, are they speaking life into you? Or are they negative? A lot of things wrong that they talk about all the time. 
That's so contagious. I was telling today to a, a young kid at, at Rosebud Schools, I said, I remember a time that I worked for a guy. He was a good guy, but he was very negative. And we used to work together. And I would come home, and Ashley would look at me, and she said, you worked with so-and-so today, didn't you? And I said, what do you mean? How did you know that? She said, you're kind of negative today. It's so contagious, but it's also contagious when you hang around the good ones too. Yeah. Your good, true friends that want to speak life into you. So how do we see ourselves will affect how we perform in life? So how do you see yourself? The way that you look at yourself, you have to see the victory cap. You have to believe it. Do you see great things God has designed for you? Do you see the great things that God can provide for you? Yes. Yes. And that's the answer to it. So what are some of these things? This is going to kind of wrap it up. But what are some of the things that, that I wanted to talk to you about, the great things that God provide and provide for you, the different areas? What about our spiritual life? provide great things to our spiritual life. It's like what we're doing right now, right here, as a body of believers and fellowship together, growing together right here. It's a way that we're seeking God through this. He's providing great areas in our spiritual life. What about the great things in our physical bodies? Like I was telling a young person today, I said, when I ask God to take over my life and be in full control of my life, it's just not what happens to my day, what decisions I make, but I want him to take over my physical body, my mind, my emotions. I want him to have it all. But yeah, even our physical bodies, the things that we desire, our body's a temple, right? Not only what we put in, you know what I mean? There's so many things we can put in there. It may even be drugs or alcohol or food or whatever it is, but what we put in makes a difference. Just like what we put in our minds. Something else that God can provide. He can provide great things through our finances. That's a tough one, isn't it? A touchy subject. Don't talk about my money. But it's really it's God's money. It's all his anyway. That goes back to it. When we ask for him to take it all, that's our finances too. He wants every step of our life to give it to him. The best part about it, he's the best driver anyways, right? Let him, let him take control. He's been around since money started, right? But what about great relationships? That's another commitment. He wants great things for those relationships, too. Whether it be friendships or spouses, whatever it may be. You know, you may be going through something through a bad relationship right now. But I promise you, he can provide a fix for it. And then even he can provide great things with our jobs and our careers. Maybe you don't have one right now. But if we seek him out in it, he'll provide the way for it. And if it's a job that you're not sure about, kind of what direction it is, it doesn't matter if you if you haul trash or cook or a lawyer or whatever it is, we can seek God and everything and he will direct our path and our careers and our jobs. He wants great things for that as well. So the statement I want to leave with you tonight is God wants to reveal his great plans in our lives. But, always a but in there, it will take us making a decision with our minds that we will not settle for nothing but the great things. Thank you guys. I'd like to pray with you before we leave. Father, we're so thankful for, for you tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that your love is unmeasurable. And Lord, we know that you want great, great things for us. Help us to know that. Help us not to settle for just little good things. 
but keep seeking you with your eyes. Follow our soul faith and through your son Jesus Christ, and that was truly the greatest thing that you provided to pay for our sins. Lord, we love you so much. Pray for you to be with each person here at home. Move and mentor and just Amen. take control over them. And there are great things that you have designed for them. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.